Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be cleaning a NES controller and replacing the conductive pads in it. Not much more to it than that, so let's get over to the workbench and see the controller that we'll be working with today. Here it is, an original NES controller. It's really not too bad, a little dirty. I've cleaned worse. Well, let's open it up and see what the inside looks like. For that, we'll need a small Phillips screwdriver. I believe this one I'm using here is a PH0. Then there's going to be only six screws we'll need to remove. We'll get a bin to set all our screws and the different parts into. Let's carefully flip the back of that case over to collect all of our screws. As you may or not be able to see here, the screws have a little bit of rust happening on the end here. We'll take care of those later. Next we'll remove the cord and board from the other side of the case. If your controller doesn't work and the cord looks fine, chances are something happened to this chip here. Here we see the contacts for the conductive pads. Again, we'll be cleaning these later. Now we'll remove the conductive pads from the controller. If the buttons are giving you issues, chances are these are to blame. See here on the directional pads, we can see some separating going on. In fact, they're close to coming off completely. Chances are this controller had some issues with the D-pad. I'm going to be throwing this pad away, so no worries about me completely ruining it here. I'll check the other pad here for the same thing. Start and select buttons look okay. A little dirty, but not bad. And the same thing with the A and B buttons. I'll actually hold on to these to maybe use in the future. Now we'll remove the buttons themselves. A and B buttons are the same, so no worries about getting them mixed up. Here's the directional button. That's looking pretty gross. We'll make sure and clean that up nicely in a little bit here. And again, the case doesn't look too bad here. But we'll still be giving it a thorough cleaning. For cleaning, I'll be using some Clorox wipes. They get a lot of the dirt and grime off, as well as disinfecting whatever we clean with them. And seeing as how I have no idea where this controller has been before this, I don't think that's a bad idea. And we'll just give it a good wipe down. While cleaning, I noticed a small crack in the case. I'll check quick for others I may have missed. We could fix this with some glue or something, but I don't think this small of a crack will be an issue. While cleaning, let's make sure to get those button slots cleaned up nice. Let's check the other half for those same small cracks. Looks good, so we'll continue with the wipe down. Making sure to get those edges wiped clean. We can use a cotton swab to get this little end in here along with the holes for the screws. Those screws were rusting, so there's going to be some gunk in there. Now I'll use a pick to carefully clean the finer detail spots like the lettering on the back of the controller and the small indents. B 
being careful not to apply too much pressure as we could easily scratch that plastic. We'll get that same little detail spots on the other half. Again, this D-pad is pretty gross, so we'll be spending a fair amount of time cleaning this up. Start with the Clorox wipes. Next, we'll take a cotton swab to it. Grabbing a pick again for that tough, stuck-on grime. Again, being careful not to scratch that plastic. Wipe it again to clean off all that gunk. Wow, looks a lot better than it did. Now the A and B buttons aren't that bad, so we'll just give them a quick little wipe down. It always amazes me how dirty these cords can get. One wipe and look how disgusting that is. We'll just keep wiping this until it no longer leaves filth on the wipe. Yeah, good enough. Next, we'll clean up the connectors for those conductive pads. For that, we will use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Then, flip the swab around and dry it up. We'll now work on polishing those rusty screws a little. For this, I'll use a number one medium grade steel wool pad. We'll just polish those rusty ends on the pad until they're nice and shiny. It's not perfect, but better than it was. We'll just repeat that process for the rest of those screws. Some are worse than others, so just polish those ones longer. Others barely have any rust on them. The steel wool pad left behind a little bit of shavings. We'll just wipe those into a pile and clean that up later. These are the new silicone conductive pads that I have on hand. These can easily be found online. Just beware, there's a reason why some are cheaper than others. We'll get the buttons put back in place and add our conductive pads. With the start and select button, the part with the groove is the bottom. Make sure the A and B pads are on those posts nicely. And same with the directionals. There's a piece that needs to be removed on this one. Just a minor production defect. Careful not to tear the rest of the pad. Now it's a perfect fit. Next, we'll replace the board and the cord. 
Ah, sorry for that jump edit there. My camera decided to stop recording for whatever reason. So make sure you get that cord wrapped around those posts correctly. Replace the back of the controller and put in our six newly polished screws. Screw those in with our screwdriver. And we're done. Those buttons feel brand new. Time to test out this freshly cleaned controller. Bonus points for anyone that can tell me about this game I'm using for testing. Everything is working and feeling great. There's nothing like new conductive pads. Really breathes new light back into a 30 plus year old controller. We have now taken our old dirty controller and made it as like new as we can. I hope you liked this video. If you really liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it will really help out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.